improve WeConnect and we are here at the Sums Euro Conference 2016. This is Matthew from Canon and I'm happy that he found five minutes for a short talk. Hi, Hi Matthew. Hello, good morning still. Still morning, yes, it's still morning, yeah. Could you please tell us what you're doing at Canon? What is your job function? Okay. Um, I have two roles at Canon. One is not that relevant to this uh, conference. I'm an IT business partner, so I do a lot of work for budgeting, uh, cost reductions, and special projects for the business. The mm -hmm. other half of my role is software asset management, software license management, and I'm accountable for all the software assets within Canon Europe. So that's uh, Europe, Middle East, and Africa, mostly obviously uh, Western Europe, but there's also quite a few entities elsewhere as well. Is it organized decentralized or centralized? Mostly centralized. However, we do have a number of affiliates and places within our scope that are not very centralized, but and probably 95% of the cost is centralized and maybe 80% of the geographical spread. Okay. You have been working in the IT for more than 15 years. How has the role changed for IT in the company? My background is civil engineering. Mm -hmm. So I studied civil engineering at university and I worked for quite a long time in the UK, then for the United Nations, development projects, etc. So I came to the Netherlands in 2000. Uh, and that's where my, uh, my real IT career starts, I've always been interested. When I first started, the technology was probably the most interesting thing, and vendors, suppliers, etc. Like, t take the example of the iPhone. When the iPhone first came out, they released new iPhones, and everyone wanted a new one because it was a significant change, a significantly better product than the last one. Hmm. Now, things are stabilized slightly, and yeah, you can buy a new iPhone 7 if you want, but is it really that much different than an iPhone 6S? And it's a little bit the same with the software, and the software vendors you're working with. The, the technology is, has stopped growing significantly quickly in terms of functionality. So now people are looking to the added value and how, how, how we can actually get more value out of the product. So it's become a more mature market. It's not quite so organically growing, but at the same time it's uh, becoming a little bit more mature. Okay. How do you manage your software licenses at Canon? We have, as I think many people do, as I'm hearing at this conference, we have the 80-20 rule, whereas 20% of our vendors are probably, actually probably more than 80%, it's probably about 90% of our costs. So we concentrate very, very much on the on the significantly large vendors we have. Mm -hmm. They they are, that's when 80-90% yeah, of the value is, 80-90% of the risk. So we, we give a lot of attention to those. We don't have a centralized tool. We do everything uh, with ad hoc and our own creative systems. We store everything in SharePoint, so it's quite basic, mm -hmm. but it does what it needs to do. Okay. Mm. Before you have been working for FedEx and U mm. UPS, uh, what are the main differences between um, the software license and asset management in a logistic uh, industry and at Canon? The difference, main difference would be is in Canon we're responsible mostly for back office mm -hmm. software. Where we're in the logistics providers, we were also producing, producing products and customer implementations, which was, which was also the product itself. And that's something we're getting more and more into in Canon. The actual, Canon's becoming more of a software company, more of a computer company itself. We don't just sell boxes anymore, we try to sell services, we try to sell added value products onto the boxes that we do produce. So we're trying to, or we are moving into the realm of also being accountable, also being responsible for the products that we sell as well. And that was always the case with UPS okay. and FedEx. What are the milestones of your work in software license management at Canon or UPS? At Canon, probably the biggest milestone we have, we have moved from being reactionary to slightly proactive. We're not totally proactive yet, but we think we're under control. Certainly, I believe the conversations we have with our large vendors, they believe we're under control and the relationship is much more friendly. And it's sometimes actually quite a healthy working relationship, we challenge each other, but we, we do get on quite well as vendors and customers. But what causes most headaches for you concerning software license management? The biggest headache that we have sometimes is not so much the software compliance itself, it's more the relationship and how the engagement and the governance works with the vendors. Because we work on a, I mean, I'm not that high up in the organization, so we work on a fairly good level together, but then how the levels above work, how the escalation layers go, how the strategic discussions go, because if you want to put my CIO together with, say, the area director of Oracle, they are very busy people, they need to find an hour, two hours, three hours every course to talk, mm -hmm. we need to put input into that discussion, and that doesn't always happen, and that's one of the things that we need to try and focus on more, is to make sure the whole governance model is in place, not just the conversations at my level.
Okay, talking about uh, more positive things, yesterday you moderated an icebreaker session. Could you sum this up and how did your um, colleagues... Okay, react? no, it was really interesting actually. It was, we went totally off subject after about half an hour, but <laughs> I think that was expected. No, it was a really, really interesting di discussion. I think one of the things I've learned, or I learn, is, is that you think some, sometimes when you work in an organisation, you don't have too much contact with the outside, you think you're the only one with the same problems. And when you come to an event like this, it becomes clear that not everyone has exactly the same problems as you, but everyone's got the same challenges, everyone has similar uh, reasons for being here. So you're not alone, mm. you can learn from other people, other people can hopefully take something out of your experiences as well. So that was the main thing I got out of last night, and it was just good fun. Is that the main reason why you came here? For the conference itself, yes. I think it's, it's just to hear other people's experiences, hear how other people have done, done things and try and learn or at least pick up tips and tricks and just to feel that you're not alone in the world with the challenges that we have here. Okay, yeah, you have a lot of more um, chances to do networking and yeah, I wish you good luck with this. Thank you very much indeed and thank you for your time. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, okay.